So glad to be here with you all today uh, to talk about breaking into the product management field. Uh, I guess wherever you guys are in your careers or maybe just starting out, kind of just giving an overview of what it means to be a PM and also transitioning from kind of a non-traditional uh, tech background. Yeah, I just want to thank all of you for coming out. It's cold today. Um, a lot of you probably didn't want to make it out here <laughs> after leaving work. You're like, ah, do I don't want to go. Like, I'll go. So it's, it's good to see that you guys have this drive. Um, I think that's kind of the first step is like to know that you want to be a PM. So I'm um, just going to go a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Queens. I uh, went to St. John's University and I graduated with a finance degree. Then I worked in risk consulting at KPMG post-grad, and I found my way to Amex um, through you know, a little bit of networking, coming to product tool events, um, and going online, reading as much as I could about what it means to be a PM, and then kind of incorporating things I learned on my own into my job when I was a consultant. So that transition took like, say six to eight months, um, but go over that a little bit. So on the mobile app team at Amex, I kind of work on the membership features. Uh, so I want to give you a little bit overview of what the Amex mobile app looks like. So there's 2.5 million daily active users, um, 80 million monthly logins. It's available in 22 markets across the globe. So two years ago, we actually consolidated into a single code base, uh, whereas before it was like different literally different apps that we had to launch in each market. So that was kind of a big uh, moment for the app. And we have a 4.9 star rating on the App Store, which I think is pretty cool for a financial company. Uh, and some notable features. Uh, there's this native dining reservations experience for our premium card members. So if you have a platinum or gold card, you, we just launched this um, in December. Uh, there's a lounge finder, so if you're a Platinum or Centurion card member, you'll have access to Centurion lounges as well as other airport lounges. So this allows you to check into your to lounges on the app, allows you to view when they're open, um, as well as any amenities, and also like guest policy and things like that. Uh, Split it, this is a relatively new feature as well, uh, allows, allows card members to go in and uh, split their charges. So let's say you go to a restaurant, you put down your your Amex card and you know you want to split the bill with your friends so you can integrate that with Venmo so it's like natively in the app you can just charge your friends and you'll get your your money back and also your points it's pretty nice and then benefits so this is something I personally uh, worked on majority of last year um, I launched this native list view of um, card benefits so originally we didn't really have something that could be viewed in a very a beautiful way in the app. It had to like go out to a web view, which uh, obviously when, when something like that happens, a lot of users drop off. So uh, the introduction of this really uh, drove engagement and it's, it's a pretty cool feature that I will actually show you guys. So here's the membership tab. And this is the entry point to benefits. So here's the list that we built. <laughs> And you'll see that it includes all the benefits as well as uh, the category filters on top. And this took about eight months, like end to end, from research to uh, design, like design iterations uh, to actual like build and then QA and release. So that, that was a pretty lengthy process, but that was like the full end to end like life cycle of you know building a digital product like this, or feature rather. All right, this is what you're here for. Transitioning to PM roles from like non-tech background. So it's just to get a show of hands, how many of you are currently in a tech or tech adjacent background? All right, that's a good number of you and I'm assuming the rest of you are not, yeah? All right, cool. So the people who just raised their hands, it's a lot, I guess a lot easier for you to make that, that uh, transition, but for me as an, Everybody else who did not raise their hands, uh, I came from a non-tech background. I was doing, you know, consulting work and related in the fi finance and insurance industry. Um, so for me, I kind of had a moment where I realized I hated what I was doing. Um, I wasn't really learning too much. I was also thinking about 
like how I could have more meaningful work. So I knew I wanted to go to a tech company. I just didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I just went around talking with different people and I realized that being a PM was kind of similar to what I was doing in terms of I was managing uh, different projects, managing uh, client relationships, and also going to different teams and interviewing people to find a solution for whatever it is that they needed. Make a list of the things you enjoy from your current role, like what you wish you had more of in your day to day and what you're doing outside of work, because that matters too. Like what you enjoy doing outside of work kind of plays into what kind of company and what kind of team you want to be part of, because uh, product spans a really wide um, gamut, right? Like you could, you could be a product manager for a backend system or a product manager for like a, like a front end thing, like, like a mobile app. So it's important to know like exactly what you're looking for um, as like a baseline. And this also may help you realize that PM is not the thing you're looking for. You could be more interested in like data analytics. Um, I had somebody I spoke to recently who, uh, after speaking with me about what I do on the mobile app team, she was, she said, actually, like, I'd rather get, you know, deep into the data, analyze that, put reports out for, for the team and be like, here are the insights from the data that you guys can do and build. Like, I'm just interested in finding these little bits of insight, you know, just know what you want. And that's what you can do by just sitting down and asking yourself some of these questions. And then I guess prioritize the key points in your list, right? And keep those in mind as you set up coffee chats, uh, read job descriptions, and learn about company cultures. Um, I know this is like super cliche, super basic, but it's important to have like goals. And I'll talk, to, talk about this later, but set up different points where you're like, I need to have this many coffee chats or like this, reach out to this many people because um, you're in your daily like lives, whatever, whatever job you're, you're in, like you're going to quickly get back into that rhythm. And if you don't set these checkpoints up for yourself, you're going to slow, just not going to do it communicate your interest. That's, this is the most important piece. This is the piece that kind of solidified my transition. And it's, everybody tells you, right? It's not, it's not what you know, right? So it's, it's who's going to give you that chance to get in front of them to be like, Hey, like, tell me your story because we all can say, we know Jira. We all can say, we know, uh, agile methodologies, agile principles, whatever it is, right? Um, what makes you stand out? is who you are. And if you don't get that chance to be in front of somebody, you're never gonna, it's, well, it's not never, but you're gonna have a really difficult time making that transition. Um, so just like kind of big themes here. Yes, it's important to know your stuff, right? You need to know the tech stack. You need to know um, kind of basic, basic like how, like an app, like maybe for a specific app, like where the APIs, what, what data is, where the data is coming from, um, kind of basic lingo that your engineers are, just speak the language that your engineers are speaking. And, um, I guess familiarize yourself with the product development lifecycle, things like that. <clears throat> Database decision making, right. So I talked a little bit about analytics before. Uh, for a big company like Amex, we have our dedicated analytics teams. So a lot of times we don't need to be the one actually pulling the data, but for smaller companies, you might need to know that, right? So you might need to know SQL. It, well, it definitely doesn't hurt to know SQL, to know Tableau and other data visualization tools. Um, but regardless of where you get your data, you need to use that to uh, support and justify your future decisions. Because if somebody asks you like, why did we build this? And you're just like, oh, it just, because it feels like it was the right move or like our customers will be happier. You need something more concrete and these numbers will help you tell that story and support your, your case. So make sure, like I guess in whatever role you are, uh, make sure data plays a more heavy role in like the way that you are executing whatever it is that you do. One of the most important things, finding ways to include different views in meetings or uh, when you're talking about discovering different features or even if you're not in, you're not in a pm role or not tech role like finding other people to talk to about your ideas because as a pm like it's not just about you know your idea 
I know a lot of times people tell you, oh, the PM is like the CEO of a product or the CEO of a feature. You're like the middle person. You make all the decisions. It's true in a sense, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you have everybody else's buy-in because that's what's going to make you a successful PM, right? Like, can you imagine working with somebody, like working with engineering and design and everybody just knows you as the guy who just make your own decisions and you don't really care about anybody other's opinions. So it's super important to build these relationships with your partners, with uh, people that you work with on a daily basis, right? Like you're, you're telling them requirements, but they're the ones executing. So you got to make sure you have kind of the soft, soft skills, right? You got to make sure you have their engagement, their buy-in um, and just have like a, a good working uh, relationship with your, your teams. It should be a walking Wikipedia page for your feature. When somebody comes up to you and asks a question about uh, the requirements for your feature, or who is, who is it going to impact, um, or you know, how long is it going to take, uh, who, who's, I guess, what other teams are involved, like, you, better, you better know it. Uh, and that's, this doesn't, I mean, a lot of these things that I'm talking about are not just for PMs, it's for anybody. It's for any role. Like you, you should know exactly what you're working on. And if you don't, then just like keep brushing up on it, keep reading more about it, and talk to different people. Uh, and they, they should be willing to educate you or like help you get to that point where you know your stuff. Yeah, I mean, be a better person, right? Like, just be nice, be empathetic. Like these things are like, you're like, oh my god, like yeah, but. Being a PM, I think a vast majority of it is like, if you're nice enough, if you're, if you're like going and you, you're nice, somebody will help you out no matter like what kind of situation you're in. I found that just being nice, like when I'm in a really difficult situation, let's say I need a, like, uh, like a patch or a, a point release, for example, like something, a major bug happened and I need the engineering team to like really be on my side. Being nice like throughout my relationship with them helps a lot and like just going over chatting with them when I have the free time building these relationships will help you get things done when you're in a pickle so um, definitely you know like practicing I don't know how many of you have ever t taken improv classes or like uh, are familiar with this yes and thing but we recently had an improv group come in and we practiced just going like yes and to whatever the person was telling us and it turned out to be like, yeah, this would work really well during a meeting. And, you know, like you practice agreeing with people to kind of get their view rather than just shutting them down because you're like, oh, that, that's never going to work. Like that's, that's too crazy of an idea. Uh, that'll help you become more innovative as a PM too. And I think that's a really important thing, right? You're a PM, you're supposed to be driving the vision for a product or feature. So being able to hear other ideas and kind of being like, take a step back and be like, all right, does this person have a point? Or like, maybe it's not the best idea, but what other ideas can sprout from those ideas uh, is, is super critical. Showing praise. Like, when somebody does something, like, say thank you. I don't know, right? Go up to them and be like, hey, I think you did a great job. And not just like, thanks on Slack or like Skype or whatever you use. Honestly, sometimes after, after a project, I'll walk over to a designer to help me or a, you know, an engineer, researcher, whoever, and I'll be like, hey, I think you did a really great job, here's why, and honest, give honest feedback. And that also goes a long way, right? These are all relationship building things. Um, and also, own successes and failures. Like, when something doesn't work, and you're like, okay, like, that was terrible, like, you gotta own it and be like, hey, that was my, like, I let that one, I kind of had these, missteps or like, I didn't see these things as clear, clearly as I should have. Um, but it's super important to make sure you own the failures as much as you embrace your successes. Uh, here's just some like materials that I thought would be helpful. So obviously product school videos, right? Like that's what helped me a lot actually. Two years ago, or actually a year and a half ago, I was kind of like one of you guys. I was sitting there and being like, all right, how do I, like, how do I talk to this person after and like also like get a job? But also, like, 
how do I better myself? How do I learn these things? How do I do these things that these, this guy is talking about? Um, so product school videos, there's so many of them. Just like watch whatever. And then I thought Shoe Dog by Phil Knight was really good uh, because he talks a lot about how he developed the Nike brand and different products. And I thought that was a really good way to see, you know, like the challenges, the successes, all these emotions that come in with building a product and building a brand. And I think that relates a lot to, um, you know, what you will experience as a PM. Maybe not to that magnitude, but you kind of will experience some of these same things. Uh, Inspired, this is kind of a classic like product book that a lot of people tell you to read. Um, I thought it had a lot of good like uh, technical things, technical terms, like product terms, but a um, little bit dry. Uh, <laughs> and tech blogs, you know, just stay, folk, stay current on what's happening in the tech world. Or I don't know, sometimes there's, um, you know, PMs also work in non-tech industries. So it could be a physical product that you want to be going into to develop. So I guess whatever industry that you plan on going into, uh, make sure you're up to date on that. And this is one of the, my favorite books of all time. <clears throat> it's uh, How to Win F Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Great book on how to deal with people in different tough situations. Um, I think this book is over 100 years old, but it's still super relevant today. And you're going to learn a lot of things, I think, just from reading this book. And it's a really quick read. So definitely read that. And some action items. Like, this is what I would do if I were you. Definitely set up, like, reach out to X amount of people every week. Um, obviously, find those connections, right? If it's like a secondary connection, if it's a university alumni, if it's um, an old coworker, or I don't know, whoever. Um, those are obviously the easiest ways to, you know, get in front of somebody, tell them your story, and then, um, yeah, continue attending events like this. Super, super helpful, at, at least when I was searching for a PM role, um, just to hear people's stories, their journeys, and also kind of learn about the culture and different companies I was interested in, right? Like, you see all these big name um, companies, and it's like, yeah, like, sure, Google sounds nice, or... You know, Spotify sounds nice, but what is it really like to work at this company and specifically on a team? Uh, there could be, like, just speaking from Amex, like the mobile product team is very different than um, like a platform team or a physical card product team. So it's, it's getting an idea of what it's like to work in these different environments and then seeing, is this the right fit for me? I actually learned something from this one guy who was like this Facebook recruiter who spoke here. And he said, when you're interviewing, like it's not just them interviewing you, right? You gotta, you're interviewing them at the same time to make sure you have that right fit. Because at the end of the day, if you go to a company and you're just like, it's a, it's a product role, but I, I really don't like this team. It's not gonna set yourself up for success. Um, and that's just the bottom line. And learn how to operate in a product development environment. So like if you're not already part of, you know, product development lifecycle, uh, familiarize yourself with the different points, right? And then try to fit that into your daily, your, your whatever your daily responsibilities are. Um, so yeah, like agile principles, writing sample user stories. Like you can be like, what's my favorite app? Or like, what can I improve? and the right requirements for that uh, as like a sample. Or you're applying to a company, Facebook and some, some, or like let's say Instagram, right? And it's like Instagram stories. All right, Instagram stories is displayed a certain way. Uh, I'm applying for this team. How am I gonna contribute as part of this team? Like all these hypotheticals and kind of envision yourself as part of it. And the more you do it, the better you're gonna be at it, right? Especially if you have no experience in product, Doing this will help you kind of at least be familiar with, you know, how the work, how the working environment is. And so when people are asking you during an interview, you're like, I know because I did this thing before. Uh, so that's, that's something you should do. And lead mock-up, like mock stand-up and discovery meetings. Um, so if you're a PM, like 
you might not always lead it, but you should be a participant in daily, weekly, whatever standups. And uh, if you're not part of that today, it's it's good to maybe go go on YouTube, look up, or talk to your friends who have, who are doing these standups, and be like, how do you guys conduct it? Um, you know, what are the best practices? And also just like practice doing it yourself. Uh, do it with like there are different product, I guess groups. Maybe maybe you'll find a community from product school, but get together with a few people and practice that. Oh, culture, super important. So we have a lot of fun on a mobile team. Uh, we went skiing, hiking. That's the design team, but they did some like time paintball paint bomb thing. And yeah, so just wherever you are, you have to be the one creating a culture because as a PM, you're gonna be you're gonna be that glue between these cross-functional teams, right? And you wanna make sure that you're creating an environment where everybody uh, is comfortable working with you, is comfortable telling you their concerns, right? The last thing you want is you're building a product with, with teams and then they have all these concerns, but they're, they don't really wanna tell you because they're not comfortable with you. So make sure you have you know, a good relationship with everybody, you're creating a good culture, you're having fun, and this will naturally set you up for you know, a solid career and solid like teams that you're working with. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the claps. Um, where is it? I don't know if Xavier. Oh, okay. Q and A. Yes. I was just wondering. So, like at work, I'm always hearing engineers mention things like Postgres, um, you know, uh, like GraphQL and whatnot uh -huh. in terms of like the system architecture. When you're non-technical and you would have to kind of come up to speed on the broad spectrum of technology behind the product you own, do you have any advice or like? Is there something you turn to to learn about all that stuff, like from a high level first before you delve into it all deeper? Yeah, so generally, oh, sure. So he's saying if you're not from a non-tech background and you know your engineers are, our engineers are mentioning all these different terms like GraphQL, what was the other one? Um, Postgres. Post, Postgres, yeah, yeah. So like, um, how do you get up to speed when you don't really know what they're talking about? Um, so I'd say start with your product org, right? Usually it's not just you as a PM and it's just you, right? There's like other PMs that are on your team. So I'd start there and be like, hey, like, can you get me up to speed, right? Those, those people are on your team. It's kind of like almost their obligation to, to help you. Um, and then ask for documentation, right? Ask the engineer or actually ask product first because they're your team and then ask the engineer if they don't have it. Uh, for documentation, usually there's some kind of um, tech stack documentation or like what like what APIs feed data into whatever you're building. Um, but yeah, I definitely ask your immediate team first. Yeah. Uh, so this is a two-parter. Uh, I would say first question is okay. So there's a product manager. It's a very flat sort of infrastructure. I've seen more companies come up with like sort of entry level roles, say product analyst or an analyst role um, in looking at it from that perspective, what is the best sort of way to get into to, to start trying to find an entry level position? How do you search online for people? And then once you get feasible, what are the key buzzwords that companies are looking for? Uh well, I think it depends like where you are in your career, right? If you're fresh out of college, yeah, go for a product analyst, associate PM, kind of roles that are like, you know, ground level. If you're a few years out, you have kind of a bit of experience. I, I would try for, I'd just go for a PM role. Um, it doesn't have, I mean, obviously when you're shooting for companies, you know, like the fan companies, right? They're, those are a little tougher. The competition is pretty tough. But if you go to smaller company or startup, um, it's yeah. I think there's a fair chance. Um, and I guess what you look for online, it's uh, 
yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory what they what's in the what's in the job description. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, for, for the resume, though, what are the key buzzwords that sort of? So if you're looking at job description of whatever company or whatever position you're looking for, they'll tell you the the, the code the, the code words the uh, the key words right like. Whatever they list, it's it's what they're looking for. And sometimes having like the having the what's it called the tools, right? Jira, Trello, um, Rally. These are these are some keywords that companies use. There's also um, like if you're familiar with certain programming lang languages, that's helpful. Um, I've never been a recruiter, so I'm not really, I'm just like talking, but uh, <laughs> I hope, I think that's how it works. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so I have a question. So how, uh, I guess as a PM, you don't have to to choose from. Um, uh -huh. I'm confused that I don't know which tools I really like. Uh -huh. So you work in the same so what's the difference between So how do you get into the impact or other the company as a PM? Is there any differences or if I, for example, jumping to one field and then I find out I don't like this field, and is that a huge transition to change the field? Uh, again, I think it's like all up to you in a sense. Like it's like your network too, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of your skills are probably very transferable. If you're a PM, you kind of use the same tools across different roles. Um, so it's it's kind of up to you to find like to build that network to reach out to people and be like, hey, like. Uh, or to, to reach out to them for, for a chat, right? I want to just learn more about your role because I'm in a role where I thought I'd like it or I didn't really do as much due diligence as my first job or as my first PM role or whatever it is. And then now I'm looking for something, you know, that I'm more passionate about or like I want to work on this other thing because now I, I found out through whatever experience you had that you actually want to work on this other uh, silo of being a, a product. Yeah. What kind of pushback did you get when you were going on your first PM interviews as someone who's coming from a consulting inter uh, consulting background where people were like, what skills do you have or we don't think you have the right skills? Did you get a lot? Of uh, generally, I didn't get a lot of like, you don't have the right skills. They're just, just going to be like, don't come back. <laughs> so it's no one's going to tell you that like you're just you're not good enough because like if they invited you to an interview, they thought you were good enough, right? It's just getting to that point is the hardest part. Uh, getting in front of somebody is the most difficult thing because being a PM, you can learn. You can learn how to write user stories. You can learn how to use Jira and all that stuff, right? Learn the tech stack, and that's unique to each team generally, right? So it's just a matter of how you communicate with people, how you um, build your build culture on your team, how you're able to rally all these different people to come together to, to this one goal of a feature or a bug improvement or just any type of enhancement to whatever you're working on. Sure. I guess to his point though, sorry, part yeah. two, um, to his point about like what makes your resume look appealing to someone, I know you're not a recruiter, but like what kind of things could you demonstrate just in a, you know, on a paper, on the paper version of like, this is who I am, is it like cover letters, were you including cover letters in your... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I apply, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you can resonate with this experience, right? Applying to everything. You're writing covers just like, oh my God, I worked like half an hour on this cover, submit it, don't even hear back, or you get a rejection, like an automated rejection email. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like... I guess it's that's why it's so important to to actually have this human aspect of it, right? Like getting in front of somebody, telling them your story, and then having them be like your champion, right? They're the ones giving you a shot. Um, so get in front of somebody, and if it doesn't just, it's not just about getting a job, right? Like you should go out and meet people to learn about product, to learn about their teams, not just all right. I want a job from you, so I'm gonna be like, yo. Can we meet and like talk about positions on your team or whatever? Mm -hmm. um, it should just be about like I'm genuinely interested to learn, 
right? And then actually be genuinely interested. And then, um, yeah, just, just find out as much as you can and then keep doing that until somebody's like, oh, I actually have an open position. Like, I love their chat. I think you're a candidate. Boom. Yeah. Uh, let's get somebody back. What do you think? Yes. No, I did not. <laughs> I didn't. Um, but I'm not saying it's like you shouldn't. It's just for me, it happened. It happened pretty, I guess, quickly from the time that I was like, I want to do product, to when I actually got this shot. Um, so I'd say it was about like three months. I was considering signing up for product school. That's why I came to some of these talks. But I actually landed. The, the role before I signed up for, for a class or anything else. But I do think, you know, it depends, right? Like, is it is a course like, you know, helpful? I think it depends on what kind of person you are. Like if you're somebody um, like me, who's able to just sit down and study some of this material and then make a plan for myself and incorporate it into my, into my own role, then you might not need it. But if you're somebody who's like, I need somebody to like prod me to do things, I need somebody to like keep me accountable, then maybe that would be the right move for you if you want to be a PM. Shameless plug. <laughs> Shameless plug, I'll also say that if, I think it also is even if you're coming from a less technical background, arming yourself with additional knowledge as well as maybe taking courses and stuff like that could be more beneficial to you so that way you're a little no harm. While other people might be coming from a background that maybe a little more technical and it might seem a little more competitive in those interviews, you always want to make sure you just have whatever is possible to help you stick out. So there's no wrong answer there, but yeah, right. shameless plug. <laughs> no, I'm not shameless. So, yeah. Uh, back. Uh, definitely remember the low lights, right? <laughs> it's just, like I said before, right? You spend so much time researching a team, company, whatever, um, writing that cover letter, tailoring the resume. Finally, it's perfect. You submit it. And then boom, like two days later, they're like, yeah, yeah, well, sorry. Like we had other candidates or whatever it is. So having like dozens of those, like definitely was you know, it sucked, but then you have those one or two breakthroughs where it's like, oh my God, like somebody wants to get on a call with me, right? Then you get that energy back. It's just important to like not lose steam, not lose hope that you're gonna get to where you wanna be. And right, that's why I said before, number one, it's like making sure you want product. It's not for everybody, but that's the most important thing. It's like, all right, I want product, I'm gonna do it, like, and I'm set on that, so. Uh, just get your head in the right place and you'll be fine. You had a question? Oh, and in your personal experience, what made you get interested in, yeah, was it something you came across when you were working at APMG? No, it wasn't actually. I talked to, I was like, <laughs> for me, I was just like, I want a culture that's fun. That was baseline for me. I was like, I want, I want free snacks. I want to bring your dog to work. Like all these things were like, wow, that's fun. Like, uh, so I actually spoke to somebody who was working at Jet, and he was telling me, like, oh, like, yeah, like, Jet's a fun place, yeah, you should work here. And then I was like, all right, so, like, what does somebody, like, my background, like, what kind of roles are available? Right? And he talked a little bit about analytics, he talked about, um, you know, business analyst roles, and then he was, like, talking to me about his role, which is PM. And I was like, that sounds, like, fun. Like, that sounds like something that I'll enjoy doing. And I was like, oh, how do I get there? And then like, he kind of just walked me through it a little bit and was like, all right, like, these are the skills you need to have. Um, you know, you should, he sent me a bunch of like websites and he was just like, all right, like just go to product school, like try to, try to go to these talks and just hear people talk about what they do as a PM to make sure that you want to be a PM. Um, and then after I had that, uh, after I was sure that I want to be a PM, it's like that whole journey of like, you know, reaching out to people and stuff like that. 
PM specialty. So there's a lot of different flavors of PM. Right. You mentioned earlier, you're doing mobile, mm -hmm. full stack, more data and analytics oriented PM, there's more just marketing or sort of consumer, all sorts mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. for the PM. How, how do you use that? Uh, so this role actually was specifically for the app. So it wasn't just like a generalist thing where I got to decide afterwards. It was straight up like posting said mobile app team. So all right, I want to do that. So oh, yeah. Oh, just as simple as like, yeah. I like to use mobile apps and I want to make an impact on that. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, here's the role. And it's like, yeah, the interview was like, you're going to be part of this team. You're going to be building features for the app. Yeah. And it wasn't like, you're going to be working, like here's different groups that you could choose. It was just straight up like app team. Do you want it or not? I was like, cool, yeah. Were you targeting specifically mobile app? Yeah, for, for honestly, I was, I was casting a wide net at first. I was honestly interviewing for like hardware stuff too. So like, <laughs> you know, Harry's, the razor company, like I was interviewing for PM roles there and I was like, cool, I'll be working at factories, like going to different places and running through like, um, I guess packaging and stuff. It just seemed like, seemed cool. So it's just like, I had I had a wide net and it was like all right like and it's not to say that you know I wouldn't have enjoyed that role I think I just had this one first and also the people were amazing uh, when I interviewed they're all super nice they're also like super friendly and um, I just got the sense that they're very they're a lot more eager to help me get to uh, competency as a PM than some of these other people I talked to. Yes. Yeah, I was wondering um, over the life cycle of that uh, feature that you're talking about, right. can you tell us how you approach uh, testimony users? Mm -hmm. um, when did you speak to people um, throughout that cycle, like before, during, after development? Sure. So, so it kind of like was determined from the top where it's like benefits should be a priority. And I had the kind of the option of working on benefits or lounges, so I chose benefits. And um, we started testing with users right after we had our own workshops to create mockups for what this benefits feature would look like. So we took it actually to the Empire State Building, uh, where we had this you know third party do some of these uh, user testing for us. Um, and we would sit in one room, like we meaning product design, yeah, just product and design. Uh, we'd sit in one room and watch a card member go through the feature. So we'd have, you know, basically it's A-B testing, right? We had two different mockups, and they'd go through it and use it. And, you know, we would see kind of what what design elements worked and which didn't, and then iterate on that. So we, I think we ran a total of, like, two different sessions for that. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty early on where we're testing it with users. And then once we had that design solidified, then it just it just went to, to development. Okay. So yeah. One kind of early testing. <coughs> uh, yeah. yeah. And then a total of like fifteen people. Yeah. Yeah. And then obviously there's yeah you know, there's QA work after development and then and then it's launch. Yeah. Oh. And then, like, how often do you have to get your hands dirty and stuff like code or whatever, if at all? Uh, I don't have to write any code, but do you have to? I, mean, I don't have to read it, but like, there's sometimes, like, a backend engineer would send over a response, and I'd be like, all right, can I? Like, I would ask, can I see that response? I'll see it and be like, all right, here's, you know, the, the title, or like, here's images, and then kind of figure out. Um, where each of that goes, and then like if if it's not optimized, like where do I go to to get it, um, things like that. But I'm never writing anything. I'm never coding. I'm just have to read it sometimes. But um, and what percentage of it did I know going in? I'd say like five to ten percent, right? And everything else, like my teammates, like people who sat next to me taught me. The engineers taught me. Um, yeah. Um, so how do you deal with the problem that you came to a PM first team job mm -hmm. and don't have any prior knowledge, uh, prior experience as a PM? 
and then we don't have anything to write on our resume as a <laughs> Right. So my resume actually never made it past the HR system, right? The keywords just weren't there. So it's that finding finding a person to be to trust that you know you're. I guess we're all going to or wherever that's taking us. Um, uh, yeah, it's finding somebody who's like, I like this person, right? Because majority of what you need to know as a PM will be taught to you, like you can learn it uh, from your teammates. So it's, it's finding that person who's like, I like, I like how you work. I like how you think. Um, and I'm going to give you a shot. Like, I'm going to give you an interview. Or like, yeah. pass your resume to somebody who will interview you. Uh, so you find people through networking. Yeah. And do you also build your own portfolio? Um, I, I should, but I, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. That's my goal for 2020. Yeah, I'm just saying maybe it will help because you don't have any experience. So if you people will see what you did, then it's all going to be Right. Yeah. I mean, I have, like, I could show some features too, but it's just like, I guess in your role, if you touched different projects that you, that are not confidential, yeah, like, definitely have a website to display that. But a lot of my work at KPMG was like stuff I couldn't, I couldn't display. So, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge, but Thank you. yeah. Okay. Uh, what's the career path for the product? Uh, I think it depends on the company. I, mean, I see it as like your PM, and then you become like a senior PM, and then you like a lead PM, and then after that, senior PM. It's just like more and more uh, features or more and more responsibility, right? So you manage like more people or I think after a certain level, you start to, you're not really executing, but you're more of the visioning. So um, it's like, yeah, like at my level, it's, it's all about execution. It's all about delivering features um, or enhancing features. But once you reach like a level where you're managing a group of product managers, you're driving that direction. You're, you're saying, here's, here's our overall goal. Um, and strategy, and then all my underlings will do it. <laughs> yeah. All the way in the back. Yeah. Typical day. Okay. So, in the morning, come in, uh, just check Slack messages that I may have missed, emails. Uh, respond to any like pressing ones that need to be addressed, and then round eleven, it's like daily stand up. So attend that, see what the engineering team's up to. Um, after that, there's like random meetings sprinkled through the week. So it's like there's a there's like a release checkpoint. So we have our our app releases uh, once a month. So we have different release checkpoint calls. So that happened, um, and then. Writing user stories, filling a backlog, right? Um, a lot of the things I'm like, a lot of times you're not really like working with engineers to be like, oh, we're, we're going to do this thing, right? You're just writing requirements for features or you're preparing for future features or future, um, I guess, enhancements, stuff like that. Yeah, so that's like average day, a lot of meetings, a lot of just talking with people bounce ideas around. Um, yeah, it's pretty chill until it's not. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it.